happy birthday to you, Shakespeare. <laughs> happy birthday, Will. Happy birthday, Shakespeare. Dear Will Shakespeare, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Shakespeare. Happy birthday, Shakespeare. <laughs> happy birthday, Will. Happy birthday, Shakespeare. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying the last 450 years. At Princeton, we who teach Shakespeare see it as an opportunity to have interdisciplinary conversations. It's really a rare opportunity to get a room full of students from all different majors and concentrations who all agree, at least at the beginning, that this material is important. How do we continue to capture the immensity of the human spirit? And it's in, it's in Shakespeare's plays. So my sophomore year, I was working on a production of Henry IV, part one and part two combined, in the chapel. I think maybe as a foreigner at first at Princeton, where I was struggling with a foreign language, that production sophomore year really allowed me to, to find that voice. We're looking at the ways in which Shakespeare continues to shape the contemporary British theater. So one of the great things about Princeton is that there are the resources at the university to do things like what I've just done during spring break, which is to take 14 Princeton students to London uh, and Stratford uh, to kind of experience the legacy of Shakespeare. It's really important for people to have opportunities to view and to perform Shakespeare because you kind of get an experience and an understanding of the text that you wouldn't be able to get it when you're just kind of learning it in the classroom. Shakespeare is very dense material, so it's really important that that first introduction is both an encouraging and clear and helpful hand in guiding you through through the texts. I played Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet when I was a senior at Princeton. We did it in the Berlin Theater, uh, part of the McCarter Theater, and it was the first time that I had done Shakespeare in a theater of that size with that kind of uh, production value. It's a wonderful amalgamation of the two to be able to study it and then see it come alive and hopefully, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, blow your mind with its intensity mm -hmm. on the stage. Yes, and I do think that reading Shakespeare is an experience of broadening oneself and one's no understanding. Question. And that happens every time we pick up a page of Shakespeare's yeah. work. And it leads me in the classroom to always make sure our students read it aloud. Love's not time's fool. The rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Working on Shakespeare reminds you the beauty and the power of language, the, the ability to transform and to act through words, the, the ability to the, <laughs> a million ways that you can express love and at the same time express doubt about that love, the way that people are able to frame identities out of language. It's, it's incredible. I just think it's an immense project that will never cease to provide new discoveries about who we are as people.